Hello and welcome to part two of a set of four videos about geometric series produced for the Yukon Q Center. In this video, I am going to derive the formula for calculating the partial sum of any geometric series and also show you how to use the formula. Before I cover anything new, let me summarize the most important facts from part one. First off, a geometric series is a series where the consecutive terms have the same ratio. In this example here, if I took the ratio of any two consecutive terms, notice that I always get the same number, 2. Another important fact about geometric series is that any geometric series, whether it's infinite or finite, could be written one of four ways. It could be written in one of these two sigma notation ways, or it could be written as the sum of its terms, or it could be written as the sum of its terms where the common A is factored out. Remember that the A stands for the first term of your series. Think about it just like the alphabet. A is the first letter in the alphabet. It's also the first term in any geometric series. Whereas R stands for your common ratio between consecutive terms. So in this example here, because 3 is my first term, what I would say is A is equal to 3. And because 2 is my common ratio, I would say that R is equal to 2. The way that it's written out here looks just like how it's written here. This is how I would represent this same series using sigma notation. I could also write it this way, where the common 3 factor is factored out. Now let me show you an example of a partial sum. Let's pretend we wanted to find the sum of the first five terms of this geometric sequence. What we could do is this. Set it up with sigma notation, where we start with 1 and end with 5 so that we're getting the sum of the first five terms. Next, what this looks like is adding up all of these fractions together. And already I could tell that this method for finding the partial sum is really inconvenient. If I was to simplify the exponents and then distribute the exponents, what we now have to do is go through the hassle of finding a common denominator for all these fractions. Once we do that, we finally get this as our answer. We have to do all this inconvenient work just for the sum of the first five terms. Just imagine if we were trying to find the sum of the first 100 terms or so. Fortunately, there is a very simple formula for calculating partial sums no matter how many terms you're trying to add up together. I'm now going to show you where the formula comes from. The derivation of the partial sum formula requires understanding this equation. This equation can be used to represent any partial sum where the SN stands for the sum of the first N terms. If you think about the partial sum that we did on the other slide, we could represent this partial sum with the equation, and it'll look like this. Notice that the N value is 5. This is because we're taking the sum of the first five terms of the series. The N value is always going to be whatever the upper limit of your series is. So in this example, the n value, 5, matches with the upper limit of the series, 5. When you look at Sn and Rsn when they're right next to each other, it becomes very clear that they have a lot of common terms. This means if we were to subtract the two of these, a lot of the terms are going to cancel out. I could tell that the ar is going to cancel out, the ar squared is going to cancel out, the ar cubed, and everything leading up to and including ar raised to the power of n minus 1. In fact, when I subtract the two of these together, all we have left over is the a and the ar raised to n, because these are the only terms that don't have something to cancel out with. When I then factor out what I can from both sides of the equation, I could divide both sides by 1 minus r, and what I now have is the formula for calculating the nth partial sum of any geometric series. Now that you've seen where the partial sum formula comes from, let's put it to use. If we were to use that formula for finding the first five terms of this sequence, we should get the same answer as what we got when we solved for it the inconvenient way by adding up all those fractions. My a value is 7 because that's the first term of the series and my common ratio r is 1 fourth. I'm going to substitute those values into this formula, and I also need to substitute in an n value. Because we're looking for the sum of the first 
five terms of the series, I'm going to set n equal to 5 and substitute that value into the formula. Doing so looks like this, and I trust that you're going to be able to follow along with the algebra I'm about to show you. I simplify this, I simplify this some more, before finally getting the same answer as what we got earlier. Before I finish this video, I need to stress a very important fact. The partial sum formula is going to change a little bit depending upon what the lower limit of your series is. The partial sum formula, as we derived it, should only be used if the lower limit of your series is 1, just like in the example you saw on the other slide. If the lower limit is 0, notice that the formula changes to be this, and I'm going to explain why. This series here is equivalent to this series. Notice the change in the lower bound, the upper bound, and in the exponent. If I was to use this version of the partial sum formula, we're still going to get the same result, because notice, having the plus 1 in the subscript, as well as having it in the exponent here, is what's going to allow me to get a 5 here, therefore representing the sum of the first 5 terms of the sequence. Cleaning this up gives me this. And notice that we already saw this expression on the previous slide, so we know what the result is going to be. I'll skip over all the other work that you saw on the other slide and cut to the chase by showing you that this version of the partial sum formula is still going to get you the same answer. Thank you for watching this video.